The Gunner Zaku Warrior from the anime Gundam Sea Destiny is an absolutely awesome take on a classic design. The design on which I'm speaking of, of course, is the Zaku. This has taken all the awesome aspects of that particular suit and dialed them to 11. And honestly, that goes double for this master grade right here. Sure, this kit may not have all the bells and whistles some more premium, more expensive master grades might have, but it has what's important. This is simple and solid and looks absolutely mesmerizing. Bandai have done some things with this kit that I've never seen done before, which results in a pretty fun build, and more importantly, an awesome finished model kit with some serious weaponry. Let's check it out. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review, and today I'm taking a look at this right here, and of course this is the Master Grade Gunner Zaku Warrior from the anime Gundam Sea Destiny. All I can say right off the bat is I absolutely adore this kit. It does for me what I want from Master Grades, and that is it's solid, it's awesome, and it looks killer. Anyway, as always, this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. Now here we go. So finally, that right there is what the Master Grade Gunner Zaku Warrior looks like out of the box, snapped together with some panel lining and some of the stickers attached. All in all, I cannot deny how much I love this design right here. The color is awesome, that unique take on a Zaku, awesome. It just looks powerful and cool. But also, just like I mentioned right there, I have done a little bit of extra effort on this than usual, which is a bit of panel lining as well as some of the stickers, and I'll talk about both of those soon. First off, there is a full spin of what this thing looks like. This is it just out of the box with none of its equipment yet, and this thing looks so awesome. I love it. A couple of the aspects about the design that stand out to me just from looking at it right here is I love the way the head is recessed down into that armor. That seems smart. If that's your main camera, of course you want to protect it. Very, very smart. Besides that aspect of the design, this model kit is quite unique with all of the raised kind of armor parts. So when you're panel lining this, it isn't necessarily recessed lines all of the time. A lot of it is indentations, raised parts like you can see on the legs. These aren't individual pieces of plastic, of course. These, like you can see right here, is just nicely raised parts and recessed parts on the surface of the plastic, but all in all, that is pretty cool. Also, really quickly, there's a side-by-side -side comparison of the spin as well as the original art of this particular Zaku. The first thing I have to mention is they have kind of rejiggered it a little bit to look a little bit more dynamic. The silhouette of this looks awesome. They've made it look a little less chibi and a lot more dramatically dynamic. There's an image of what it should look like from the back with all the equipment on. And once again, I have to say I really love what they did with the surface of this compared to the standard basic looking surface in that original art. All in all, it looks so good. Bandai have done an absolutely fantastic job with the color here. It's so eye-catching, so perfect. I'm not sure how it will turn out in the video because reds like this tend to be a little bit on the uh, difficult side for my camera. Sometimes they're a little bit oversaturated, sometimes they're a little bit undersaturated, sometimes they're totally out of focus like that. But all in all, I can say this thing looks spectacular in person. The other colors on here look great. We've got that black, which is an almost matte black, and it's soft to the touch. Something else I will talk about a little later in the review. We've got some absolutely pure whites as well, like the vents there on the chest. Again, pure white, pure awesome. Then we have this very, very, very light pink that you could almost think was white at first glance, but no, that is a very light pink. Color correcting stickers? It's got none. So as for the decals that come with this kit, there's a picture I took before I took a bunch of them off. These don't look too bad in a vacuum. They're actually quite nice. These are sticker style, which is always a letdown. They never look really all that great on there, but whoever designed these and their layout needs to be locked away because they're an absolute madman because I followed the instructions for a bit and ended up with this right here. Look at that mess. It's just like, bip, 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 bip. It's like there's a shot on there with a decal shotgun or a two-year-old did it. They don't look good. These are coming off. This one's a mess. This one's a mess. They're not too bad. It's not as cluttered anymore. A sticker style decal on a curved surface. What are you thinking? Besides that though, they are quite nice. I do like the shoulder ones. This one's a little bit sketchy, the one with all the writing, but the worst aspect with these is they are sticker style. So that means you'll always see the outer section of those. They'll never really look good. I miss the days of those rub on dry transfers. As for quick size comparison, there it is side by side with standard size Master Grade, that's the Granddaddy 3.0, a small Master Grade, that is Gundam F91, and an absolutely huge Master Grade, the Sazabi Verka. So all in all, it's a little bit, ever so a little bit on the small side. 
But anyway, before I go any further in this review, I'm going to do something I did in the last review, and that is I'm going to talk about five good things I absolutely adore about this kit, and five bad things I don't particularly like about it at all. So here we go. We're going to start with the good. As someone who is entirely unfamiliar with Gundam Seed Destiny, I didn't know that this redesign of Zaku included redesigns of classic Gundam Zaku weapons. That's a redesign of the classic Zaku machine gun, redesign of the classic Zaku heat hawk, and a redesign of the classic Zaku shoulder shield. All of this is sheer awesomeness. You know those annoying little pipe bits on Xeon kits that you have to individually thread onto the inner part? It takes ages to cut out, clean, etc. Massive pain in the butt. Well, as for this little section here on the leg, this all comes pre-molded on Runner K, so all you have to do is pop it off the runner, give it a bit of a wiggle to make sure it's all ready to bend, and then you're done. It just pops in here and up here, and you're done. Awesome. I hate polycaps, they're unreliable and my dog likes to eat them. Thankfully the Gunner Zaku Warrior doesn't feature a single one in its build whatsoever, which makes it awesome in my opinion. And that leads right into the next awesome aspect and that is that black plastic. The black plastic that makes up the inner frame as well as all the joints on the back of the shield everywhere that matters internally on this kit is made out of a semi-flexible black plastic that really grips, which I've never once seen before. Which means that once you pop this guy right here in a pose, even though it doesn't have any polycaps, that plastic really does grip the pose perfectly. No flopping around here! Passes the wiggle test with flying colors. Once again, no flying pieces. And for the last awesome aspect about this kit, and it was hidden right in plain sight here, is this! Some of this kit is made up of 1100 Zaft frame. All the rest say Gunner Zaku Warrior or Zaku Warrior. So you know what this means right here? That means they're gonna be making more based on this frame. Even if they're just P Bandai color variants and parts variants of this, I am all on board. I love this thing. We'll buy more. So without a doubt, the Gunner Zaku Warrior is absolutely awesome, but it's not without its downside. So let's check out the five bad aspects. If you're an inner detail junkie, this might not do it for you because on the inside it is a bit on the simple side. A lot of boxy square shapes and plain parts. Sure, at the end of the day, once you've it all built, that doesn't matter, but there are those of you, and I know there are those of you, who love your internal detail, and some of this just looks quite plain. Speaking of some plain aspects, like I mentioned, this doesn't feature a lot of the bells and whistles of more premium, higher-end master grades. Design-wise, it is a bit on the basic side, so that does mean there is no undergating, so that does mean we have surface nubs like what you're seeing right now, and as well as that, just moving up slightly, we've got some mold lines, something I haven't seen in quite some time. Right there, we've got ourselves a pretty hefty mold line. Right there on the butt, we've got another one. You can see it right there, catching the light nicely. And this thing's massive gun features a massive seam the entire length of it. The entire length of this huge thing. It's got one massive seam line. So that is nubs, seam lines, and mole lines. So a lot to clean up and a lot to fix if you want this to look absolutely perfect. Well, speaking about this gun, this also features a wire with some varnish tube on it, or as the Japanese call it, varnish tube. I find this keeps separating from the ends where it attaches all the time, like it's slightly too short. I pull it down, and it's like, oh, it's fine, and then in a little while it's just slid back up again. Up there is the other end of it, and as you can see, it has slipped off. This is kind of annoying. There is nothing to hold it in place or to keep it in there. It even kind of goes over it like a Chinese finger trap or something. All in all, this could be a little bit longer and pinned in a little bit better. As for the next down point, oh hey Strike Remaster, I didn't even see you there. Oh hey Strike, where's Freedom 2.0 at? Oh he went and uh, broke his hip again. He has to get one of those Chinese metal hips put in. Oh yeah? Can I borrow your beam rifle? Sure, why not? What? So yeah, Bandai gave this kit swappable finger style hands, but did not make them compatible with the previous seed kits, which were in turn compatible with the Wing EW kits. What wasted potential. By the way, where'd you get that sweet little Neo Zeong? Oh that? Let me tell you. Want that awesome Neo Zeong narrative version but don't have the JPY for the P Bandai exclusive giant high grade mountain of plastic? Don't worry, there's a cheaper, cuter alternative. And that is the Gundam Converge EX27NZ9992 Neo Zeong. 
Featuring a translucent stand with sleeves iconography showing your loyalty to the remnants of Xeon, super ease of assembly and a tiny, super cute little Sinanju Stein narrative version with bazookas akimbo, perfect on your shelf, on your desk, or in your Neo Xeon for some Neo Xeonception. Get yours today at HLJ. Did I mention it comes with some gum? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, good. Mm. I like that. As for the next down point, and this drives me a little bit mad, and that is the mono eye in there. That can look side to side, but in order to do that, you need to pull off the top of the head. This is me doing it in real time, by the way. Trying to get that off. Nope. Nope. No, man, that doesn't feel like it's meant to come off again. Got that big ridge around there. That big armor part. Look, look at this. Like I said, this right here is real time me trying to get this head off. No joke. There we go, finally. Then we've got that little dialy bit on top to turn it side to side like so, but that helmet is a little bit on the awkward side to get off. They could have designed this a little bit better. But at the end of the day, the pros completely outweigh the cons with this kit. It's absolutely fantastic. Now on to the accessories. So now moving on into the accessories and there's the Gunner Zaku Warrior with absolutely everything that it comes with. So like I mentioned already, that is including those weapons which are those classic Zaku weapons redesigned, including the beam assault rifle, heat hawk, and the shoulder shield. As well as that, we've got swappable fingers in fists, holding hands, widespread open hands and trigger fingers, a base adapter, one 100th scale pilot figure of Luna Maria Hawk, and the main event in here, probably one of the daftest named weapons I've ever seen, the Gunner Wizard. Woo! And I almost forgot, we also have these four grenades, which are the ZR-20E High Explosive Grenades. As for the first weapon we have in here, that is the Beam Assault Rifle. This is mainly in black, so it is a bit on the plain side. We do have one white piece right here towards the front. There is no kind of foil sticker or anything for sights or anything like that on here. We do have this peg in the side for attaching it, which is always sticking out there. It doesn't look that great. But on top of that, we do have some moving parts, including this handle towards the front, which can flip up and down like so. And as for the magazine, that can pull up and drop to the side for storage. To attach this, it's the regular old swappable fingers routine. You stick them into the fingers that you want, which is these trigger finger fingers right here. And then that just snaps into the hand like so. Simple as. And this holds in pretty damn well. No problems at all. So like I mentioned, when this is not in use, you can pull this up, it drops down to the side. This piece round here on the butt opens up like so to expose the hole. And then that just attaches on here like so. The next weapon we have in here, and once again, this is quite plain, just in black plastic, is the Heat Hawk. This is what it looks like without the blades attached, I should say the blade effects. And I have to say, I absolutely love that pick section on the back. That looks nasty. Love that. As for those beam effects, we've got one that attaches into the top, which looks like that for some stabby stabby action. And we also have this one here, which attaches like so. And there we go, that is both of those. Pretty damn cool. Once again, to attach these into the hand, you use those swappable fingers. This time it's not the trigger finger style, it's the standard holding style. And once again, snap in like that. Next up in here, then we've got the shield. This is rocking the same colors as the mobile suit. That's white, that pinkish red, and around back we've got the black. Some stickers on these spare magazines for the assault rifle. This is pretty interesting, I have to admit. This is a cool design right here. This is the segment that attaches into the shoulder. This is articulated down here with a ball joint on top and this bendy bendy joint right here. And this can tuck in like so to keep it nice, tight and strong. But it can pop out for more posing options. All in all, pretty awesome. This attaches into this little socket in the shoulder like so. And once again, that can fold in like so. Keep it tight to the bot. I actually haven't tried this yet, but I'm curious if these spare magazines can be used with the machine gun or not. Pop that off. I can already see from below these spare ones don't look as good as this standard one, but do they fit? Pop that off like that. See if this can attach on and yeah, you can attach those if you want, but I will mention that from below, they don't look exactly the same as the one we were just looking at. But anyway, now that we've got all that basic equipment attached, this is what the Zaku Gunner Warrior will look like up on your shelf. All in all, looking good so far, and this isn't even with that big awesome Gunner Wizard attached yet. All in all, so far I have to say this thing looks spectacular. As for the grenades I almost totally forgot about earlier on, there's a reason for that. I wouldn't exactly call these an accessory because once you take them off the side skirting, this right here is what they look like at the back. So these really are for display purposes only in my opinion. So they just attach 
on here, and that's where they're gonna stay. And just before I get onto that heavy weaponry, as for the hands I haven't mentioned yet, we've got a pair of fists and jazz hands. Lastly then, in here we've got the base adapter, and usually I don't talk about these in the reviews because they're always pretty much the same. That is until I saw the absolute failure of the one that came with the Master Grade Unicorn Gundam that couldn't hold it up. From now on, I better try them out. And what reminded me of that was the fact that this has a ridge in the middle, just like with the Master Grade Unicorn. So anyway, let's try it out. Action Base check. Action Base adapter check. And let's check out just how good this adapter is. I'm gonna do this in real time, so... There is no shenanigans, off-camera shenanigans of any kind. And so far, where does this attach? Here, maybe? Come on, come on. Keep saying things so something's happening. This is not attaching. Uh, get, mm. Oh, there we go. So yeah, that doesn't feel too bad. The tilting back and forth is the action base, not the adapter. So, all in all, pretty good. Actually, maybe too good. Now I'm having a bit of... An issue getting, ah, uh, there it goes, off. Oh. So next up here, and we've got the Gunner Wizard, probably one of the oddest weapon names I have ever heard. So this is a bit of a backpack section in black, as well as the tank over on this side, and the business end over on the right. In typical C Destiny style, this features a bunch of colors that aren't on the mobile suit at all, including that kind of lavender gray, as well as the red. All in all, it looks pretty cool. It could look a little bit better if I did a bit of panel lining on there, because there is a lot of panel lining opportunities, but that is definitely something worth doing. Design-wise, this is not nearly as nice as the mobile suit. There's that big seam line down the entire length of it. That handle looks a little bit weird, hollow, and not really all that important looking. It doesn't look great. And we also have a bunch of nubs on the surface. All in all, this could look a little bit better. All in all, it could look a whole lot worse though, but anyway, let's slap it onto the mobile suit and see what it looks like where it belongs. As for how this attaches, it seems to be a three-hole system. This is something I've never seen before. So as far as I know, this won't be compatible with anything that exists right now. If it is and I'm wrong, drop that in the comments so we all know. And the attachment section on this is made out of that grippy, grippy soft plastic. So that does mean once it's popped in, it tends to stay in and it can be a little bit hard to get out. Anyway, pops in just like so. Once you swing that wizard down, and I'll never get used to calling it that, you can flip out the barrel at the front like this, it's quite long, and flip out this rear section. So that's two flipping sections. And all in all, this is one long wizard. Also, like I mentioned before, this right here is flexible. It's a wire inside of a varnish tube. This could look a little bit better. It tends to, uh, come away from the edges, like I mentioned. And this arm section is incredibly nicely designed. So this arm here can be a bit on the annoying side. I won't lie, I've had to re-record this part about four times now because it's just fallen apart. So these little joints up here are a ball joint with a bit of a pivot as well. So there's the pivot. The ball joint allows for rotation. Off it comes. This little joint in here just lets it go up and down like so, but it's not really held in perfectly well. As you can see, the joint is open like that, so it just kind of slots on and has to hold itself in with a little bit of a clippy sort of end. It's not great. And lastly, this one here is the same as up there, so it's mainly just a big old ball joint, like you can see there, with somewhat of a forward and back, but it is inclined to kind of fall out a bit. It's a little bit annoying. The last thing I almost forgot to mention is this handle can pull up at this point, and rotate in and out at this point here. As for other moving parts on this huge cannon, this handle can move up to the side like this, and then has more pivot here to here, and this whole segment here with the sight section can slide up and out like that, and this in here is just a sticker, a blue sticker, off the sticker sheet. So anyway, finally there it is up on the shelf with that giant gunner wizard attached, and all I can say is I'm not a huge fan of this whatsoever. The arm round back is a little bit on the awkward side, but that's the least of this thing's issues. Visually, it's not great. The handle is outright ugly, it's got a massive seam line up the middle, nub marks are quite obvious, it's made of huge parts, the varnish tube on it doesn't really stay in place and cover the wire too well, and all in all this feels like a bit of an afterthought. I kind of feel like they were making the standard green version first and were like, huh? Maybe it won't sell as much as if it was the Luna Maria version and then like threw the gun together in the last minute. Pretty much to sum it up, the bot feels Master Grade 1100, whereas the gun feels no grade 1100, if you get what I mean. Also, it's a pain in the butt to pose. So now moving on to the final aspect of the review, and as usual, it is the articulation and from the head down. So first off, starting with the gig wait a minute. This thing doesn't have a giggity giggity. Look at this. Eh. Eh. 
Eh. That's pathetic! Pathetic! Actually, this thing has the most paralyzed neck I've seen in a long time. There's it looking all the way up, there's it looking all the way down, and there is your side to side. It is a double jointed neck, but it's just so simple it doesn't really do anything. It's a, oh, oh, I've unlocked it a little bit, so there it is, oh, not worth talking about. At the shoulder, the arm can move forward quite a bit, that is very nice. The shoulder can spin all the way around there. The armor is independent to the arm, so it can move up and down like so. As for the arm, there it is all the way up. Not too bad. Full rotation up there at the upper arm. Next up there is that bend at the elbow. Awesome. Here be a double jointed wrist, so I meant to do that. These do pop out quite often, I will admit. So the ball joint there allows them to move around, but as you can see, this may be a downside of no polycap, maybe, I don't know, but it likes to fall out. Besides that though, we do have another bit of a joint here, which allows it to move in like that. Flex in. Extend out. At the waist, as for the ab crunch, there it is all the way to the back. There it is all the way to the front, so not a whole lot really. As for the rotation, it is blocked there too. If you bring it up further, you can get that full 360, but you need to bring it out slightly from its full resting position. I know this is a grunt, but this is one basic little cockpit here. It opens up just like so. Bust out the flashlight so we can see on in there to Luna Maria herself. The skirting armor bringing that Reborn 100 flare. This can move up only. Up only. Woo! Look at the back of that. That is not Master Grade level. We've got a double butt flap, but I'm not sure if I'd call that premium when it just kind of raises up off of this waist section here. We saw before this does come down to expose that hole. We do have a rocking forward and back hip in here. Both legs are independent from each other, so doing this isn't affecting the other leg. And speaking of which, there is a kick up to the front. There is that kick all the way out to the back. And as for the splits, no problem at all. As for the spin kick at the upper thigh, that can spin all the way around while out like this. But once it's in, that armor does get in the way of that happening. Next up there is the bend at the knee, so it's alright. Pretty good. This little thruster segment can move in and out like this. Rock forward and back, and that can pull out even further like so for that full spin right there. That's a cool thruster. On the other side, we have something similar that can move in and out like so, but because of this little cable section here that cannot rotate back and forward, not really, and it does kind of click into place and stay in place. We have a thruster here that moves up and down ever so slightly. Not a whole lot out of that right there. The front armor here can move up and down again. This isn't a whole lot of movement. And finally then down at the foot we've got rotation there. That side to side pivot which is quite impressive. The toe cannot bend down the way but it can bend ever so slightly up. Let's check the functional movement. As in, what kind of movement can we get out of this foot when it's still planted firmly on the ground? So there is all the way to the front. So that isn't really a whole lot. There is all the way to the back and that is pretty nice. But of course, where this wins out is side to all the way side here. The bend into the inside does win out there. And that is the most important aspect when it comes to a leg, I find. So all in all, this is definitely a mixed bag. The legs are quite good for the most part, the arms are great, and the torso could be a little bit better, especially the neck. But all in all, pretty damn good. So that right there is it for the review, and this is one of those kits that I find so hard to rank because it is a bit of a mixed bag. The mobile suit itself is absolutely fantastic. I love it to bits. It's simple, it's solid, it does everything right. It doesn't extend itself too far and end up a bit of a flop because... It's trying too hard, it's just a good all-rounder of a kit. It does have some little cosmetic issues like some seam lines, mold lines, a lot of nubs on the surface and whatnot, but these aren't par for the course for a model kit, they're not that big of a deal. The design in itself is great, the articulation is great. Essentially, all of the weapons are great besides the major one in here, which is the cannon. That could be a little bit better and does feel a little bit like an afterthought. So after so much deliberation, I finally decided that this right here, based on its best merits, is gold tier. I absolutely love the Zaku to bits. The gun, not so much. Once again, that gunner wizard definitely is one of those buns that needed a little bit longer in the oven. It just wasn't ready yet. But just as a whole and the bot itself, I absolutely adore the gunner Zaku warrior and highly, highly recommend it. 
It's such an absolutely awesome take on a Zaku and it just looks mesmerizingly cool. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. As always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I'll see you next time. Once again, all my unending thanks to each and every one of you guys who watch my videos, as well as all of you who support the channel through the channel memberships and on Patreon, including Tyler Sanders, Bullwick Vex, Forged Horizons, Kaiser 71, NQG420, and Craig Jerry.